Thanks everybody for joining us, whether you're with us live today or whether you are watching this later because you're looking at the recording. Glad to have you here today. Let's start where all good stories start. What is it about these four words? Often when I'm speaking to a group in person, we'll go around the room and talk about the earliest memories that people have of these four words. Usually it's something from childhood. At some point early in our lives, someone has said to us, or we've seen maybe a film or something where these words were uttered once upon a time. Those memories can be long lasting, lifelong lasting. In fact, folks have told me that they remember their first Disney movie or the story that their grandparents would read to them when they were a small child. That's the power of story, which over recent decades has been time and time again validated by scientific research. There's a lot of information about this on our website, including in some of our blog posts and some information we'll share with you after this webinar. But science proves through fMRI and other tools that stories work. It's the original communications medium, no batteries required. All you need is a brain and an imagination. And the important thing is in the 21st century, when we're overloaded with digital clutter from different platforms, and we're trying to make sense of the world, stories are baked into our brain. And that's what really helps us make sense of any important information, including if you're running a healthcare organization, how to stand out from your competitors, how to stand out for the audiences that are most important to you. Yes, yes, we know. When we think of storytelling, if we think about it at all in a business context, we think about companies like Disney or maybe Nike or maybe Apple, Harley Davidson, right? What a story. Ben and Jerry's ice cream, Southwest, one of my favorites. Yes, those companies do tell a great story. But for you, if you're a leader in a healthcare organization, stories are particularly important. Why? Because the research shows we're doing a bad job. We're not really explaining to people why they need to engage with our organizations. This comes from the Edelman Trust Barometer. Edelman's the largest PR agency in the world. And for decades now, they've been doing a series of annual surveys that they call the Trust Barometer. Recently, they did one where they talked to healthcare institutional investors about healthcare. And this is one of many findings in the study. And you'll see here in the slides that there's a hot link there. After the conclusion of the webinar today, you'll be getting some downloads from a landing page. One of them will be the PDF of these slides, and you'll be able to take a look for yourself and read this and many other resources that we're gonna to share today. But look at that, two thirds of investors in healthcare, people who are knowledgeable about healthcare, people who want to be associated with the newest technologies, the best medicines. They think healthcare organizations are doing a crappy job of sharing the story that's most important to engage stakeholder audiences. The work that we do at WordWrite, which over the last 21 years and more than 250 clients, has included a sizable percentage, dozens and dozens of healthcare organizations representing everything from providers to payers to physicians, to pharma. We've seen this over and over again, the need to tell a better story. We take a lot of our inspiration at WordWrite from thinkers like Simon Sinek. He wrote this book called Start With Why. That book came after this TEDx talk he did in 2009. And I highly encourage you when you get the PDF of the slides to go and watch it once again. It's from 2009. Millions of people have watched this video. Cynic was speaking to business leaders in general, but this is especially true in healthcare. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. That's the differentiator. What you do simply proves what you believe. With multiple choices of doctors, medicines, providers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. People buy why, why you do what you do, not what you do. I, I love this. A Andrew 
um, Stanton, one of the greatest thinkers behind this monster, uh, well, they've done Monsters Inc. too, uh, called Pixar, right? We got a new movie out uh, that's a teen romance. Check it out if you want, uh, The Elementals. This is another TED talk. It's a great talk. He's an amazing storyteller himself. And he tells a great story at the beginning of his talk. Not suitable for work, I'm just gonna warn you right now, but it is very appropriate. The greatest story commandment, make me care. Folks, healthcare. We start with an advantage if we're in healthcare because people are looking to healthcare organizations across the spectrum of companies and organizations and institutions to do something great. But you just can't stop there. You have to make an emotional and intellectual connection with the audiences that are most important to you. And let's talk about you, right? You're here because you want to learn more about how to better share your organization's story. And to some decades of working with healthcare organizations, here's some things that we've learned. You're really great at what you do, but the people who are gonna hire you, whether that's consumers or whether that's hospitals uh, selecting your solution, software or hardware or whatever, they usually aren't as smart about what you do as you are. And what does that mean? That means you need to be sharing a narrative that's unique, compelling, and most of all, memorable. After the pitch meeting, after they've looked at your pretty videos on your website, after they've met your sales team, they need to make a decision. They need to remember you, and they need to remember why they wanna work with your organization rather than any other. Now, one of the things that we've seen, or rather a number of the trends that we've seen, they kind of constitute what you see here on the slide, you know, I was at an event last week and somebody said, we're in the um, aftermath economy. I don't know, post COVID, whatever you want to call it, right? There's a lot of turmoil out there, right? Uh, I start the day reading Becker's Hospital Review and then you, I, you just read the headlines that come in in my email and they're all over the place. Uh, hospitals uh, laying people off, closing facilities, hiring, et cetera, et cetera. In healthcare, we're seeing this across the spectrum. An organization where your sales are stuck or your growth is inconsistent, where your messaging is inconsistent, the way people in the organization talk about the value you provide is not really aligning very well. It creates a situation frequently where your prospects, again, regardless of what kind of audience, see little or no difference between you and the competition. This has been a huge issue in healthcare. Maybe you're having a hard time hiring or retaining talent, right? Maybe because you've been focused on other things, let's say you're an early stage life sciences company, you don't even have a marketing strategy yet. Or worse, you don't know what your marketing ROI is. It's maybe even non-existent, right? In terms of sharing your story, these are critical issues that we see that really rise to the level of, boy, I really better take a look at how we're sharing the value of what we do. Now, as I said earlier, <laughs> if you're in healthcare, somewhere around there, you're about saving lives. Look, if you run a company that maintains medical ambulances, you're making sure the ambulances are there to save lives. But we can't all be sharing the same story. We can't all be simply saying, we're about saving lives. Then there's no differentiation. Now, on top of that, healthcare, is filled with jargon. And there's frequently little agreement on the definitions of the terms we're using or what they mean. I've got a quote here from a chief nursing officer uh, at a hospital in New Jersey. Leaders throw around important words and concepts, engagement, empathy, well-being, safety, but there's no real analysis and no real connection to what that really means within the organization. And what we've seen at WordWrite is that this is not just true of employees or staff, it's true with all stakeholder audiences. People are having a hard time understanding your why if you're not giving them a clear picture of your story. So what are we gonna do in the next 20 minutes or so, and then hopefully we'll have some time for questions. Number one, we're gonna start a journey 
to address these issues. And then after this webinar, ideally, your journey will take you wherever it needs to take you. Certainly, if you want to chat with us more, we're happy to chat with you. But please, explore. We want to get you started on the path of creating alignment and how people in the organization are talking about your story. We also want to create clarity. Again, this is uh, an endeavor, a passion that's filled with all kinds of miscommunication because of technical jargon and a lack of agreement on meaning. We want to give you some confidence in whatever spend you're making to share your story in communications and marketing so that you get results. And not just any kind of results, measurable results. The kind that tell you your story is indeed unique, compelling, and memorable. Now, when we talk about story, we're talking about a very specific story. In healthcare, we tell lots of stories on a daily basis. If you're a physician, you're sharing a story with a patient about improving their healthcare in the moment, maybe in a care setting. Uh, maybe if you're running a healthcare organization, you have quarterly goals. Those are both important stories. The story we're talking about is the story that defines the very character and nature of the organization because it rises above all the important stories that you share as a healthcare leader. We call it your capital S story. And the reason it gets that capital S is because it answers four fundamental questions about your organization. Why would somebody buy from you, work for you, invest in you, or partner with you? These are the questions that your most important stakeholder audiences are asking themselves before they enter into a deep relationship with you, right? And if you're a caregiving organization, instead of buy from you, it might be willing to have you uh, work with them, right? Um, submit themselves to your, your care, right? Uh, certainly, if you're a medical device company or providing some sort of healthcare solutions, it's still uh, buy from you. And talent, right? If you're an early stage company, maybe you need investors. And certainly, across the healthcare continuum, you need partners to do the best work that you can possibly do. Capital S story, why somebody would buy from you, work for you, invest in you, or partner with you. Now, one of the things we've learned in more than two decades of doing this and sharing literally thousands of iterations of stories for hundreds of clients is this. Our brains are hardwired for story. Science proves it. And there are common stories that we see that are frequently shared in healthcare. Now, I've got five examples here. These aren't the only kinds of stories that we see in healthcare, but these are common. Your origin or your founder's journey. If you're an early stage life sciences company, you're living this right now. Why did the founders of the company decide to take the risk and go out and work on a medicine or some sort of healthcare solution that may take them years to develop before they see the first dollar in terms of revenue? It's a dream or a vision or a passion, a different way of doing something, right? This is happening every day in healthcare. Headlines across the spectrum of news media are filled with stories that explain a vision or a dream. It, and similarly, in innovation, a different way of delivering care, a different way of accounting for the technology or the solutions that make care possible. Maybe it's a coming of age. Frequently what we'll see is that folks are working in an organization on a solution and people will look at it and say, yeah, I don't really understand that. And then something changes in the environment. All of a sudden, what they've been working on for a long time is the rage and everybody wants it. And certainly an epiphany, right? You're working on one kind of solution and by accident, you discover a drug that does something else, right? Without getting into a big controversial discussion, look at Ozempic and Wagovi, drugs developed for one specific purpose that are now being applied for another purpose. And quite literally, for the companies that make those drugs, it could change everything, right? Now, okay, Paul, so that gives me an idea of what a capitalist story is. It's going to answer why somebody should buy, work, invest, or partner with me. Where do I need that story? Well, quite simply, everywhere. 
It's got to be on your website, especially the home page. Good old Mr. Google tells us that's still the first place most people go when they are looking at your website. Now, they're going to bounce out in less than three seconds, generally speaking, unless they're interested. And if they stick for longer than three seconds, they're going to go to your about page. This is an interesting solution. I think I might want to engage with this provider, or I might want to look into this company's medicines, et cetera, et cetera. Who are these people headed straight to the about page? Now, here's one of the things that we see where a lot of healthcare organizations fall down. You need to carry through your story into your social media profiles, especially LinkedIn. What you're selling on one level or another, if you're in healthcare, is the expertise of your people. And folks who want to engage with your organization are going to go to the number one site for user-generated content, i.e. you're not going to lie or use advertising jargon to make yourself sound better. What does your LinkedIn profile say? Where did you go to school? What's your experience? What certifications do you have? Why does your company or do your leaders deserve my trust and my willingness to engage with you? If your organization does any sort of PR, and you do press releases, your story needs to be there too. In the PR biz, there's this term called boilerplate. You may not know what it is, but we've all seen it. Whatever the press release says, there's gonna be a paragraph in there that says about WordRight or about your healthcare organization. And whatever is in that paragraph needs to be your story. Because when somebody's Googling your organization, Google is gonna pull up one of those cool snippets. And that snippet, is going to come from that press release boilerplate, as well as perhaps some other sources. So you don't want it to be filled with jargon and nonsense because you want people to engage with you. So give them the story. Sales materials. If your organization is using printed sales materials or online sales materials, videos, it doesn't matter. That story needs to be there. And as we've already talked about earlier in today's webinar, talent communications, and not just to attract talent, but to retain your talent. Why are your people there working for you? What gets them up out of bed every day and coming to work at your company? Now, Simon Sinek's written three books. His most recent book is called The Infinite Game. I highly recommend it. In this book, Sinek describes what he calls just cause companies. A just cause company Think of Apple when Jobs came back in 1997. He told his team that he wanted to put a dent in the universe. He didn't want to blow it up. He didn't want to knock it off course. He had this huge goal. So many healthcare organizations are trying to literally cure cancer or solve some difficult healthcare issue. How good of a job are you doing in sharing your organization's story to attract and retain the talent that's gonna help you move that mountain and get closer to that ultimate objective. So you need to have your capital S story in all of these areas. To bring this to life, and we're gonna hope that the technology cooperates with us today, I wanna share some lessons from three healthcare organizations across the spectrum and share with you what in our estimation they've done right and what they could do better to be sharing their capital S story. So let's take a look here. The first example is the story that kind of explains it all. Now I have to say that, you know, there's a lot of Latin in healthcare. <laughs> I don't particularly like Latin in healthcare. I know there's a lot of people in healthcare that had to learn and still use Latin on a daily basis. Generally speaking, you're not communicating with people who are in love with Latin, right? You can use that to your advantage though. And I think that's one of the things that the company I'm gonna show you did well in explaining their name and what they do. So be willing to make healthcare understandable. So what exactly does the name Protenus mean? Protenus is a Latin word meaning to move forward or onward. What does the name Protenus mean to us? At Protenus, we believe that the delivery of care should be without risk. So we are doing our part. 
one patient, one customer at a time with a single focus to move healthcare forward, onward, empowering healthcare to eliminate risk. We have cultivated the largest collaborative user community of compliance experts and peers, which is called PANDAS, continuing our efforts to eliminate risk and move healthcare forward. Onward. Together. Together. I, I took that down. Um, so I a couple things here that I want to want to share. I, it's great that they define what they do, and it's it's not a bad video. It's it's nice and short. Obviously, in healthcare, you're not going to communicate everything you want to do about your story in, in one minute. Um, when you take a look at the link you'll get in the slides, you'll see the text that's also around the story. I really couldn't tell exactly what this company does from. Uh, their video, although I thought it did a good job in a lot of ways. Um, it's a compliance company, and they focus on digitized patient data. It was also started by a couple of doctors um, who got to talking about the need for digitized patient data and how that would improve outcomes while they were at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. I think I would have liked to have seen that even in a short video uh, about this company. So. I think it's a great start and gives you an idea of how you can share your story in a short format. And again, you don't need actors or uh, anything high tech, right? Uh, there are companies out there um, that will create these kinds of uh, stop action or move action uh, cartoon-like videos. I thought that was pretty well done. I talked a little bit about the why today. Uh, a lot of times healthcare, it's, it's a long-term play by which I mean that uh, you're going to be working on something today, the fruits of which uh, you might not see for uh, quite a long time. And there are a number of organizations that may be involved in this along the way, right? Uh, and we're going to take a look at one of those companies. Um, they focus in the area of clinical trials. And I thought the way they approached the patients involved in clinical trials and made them a part of their story is really very interesting. So I am going to share that screen so we can take a look at it. It starts with people. They may come from anywhere, but they're driven by common goals. Their search for a brighter future. They inspire us to learn from their lives across language and race, ability, ethnicity, and community. So we design clinical trials that give them a voice, honor their sacrifice, and treat them as equals. We are more than 21,000 professionals working with passion and perseverance to open doors, to lead change, and find new ways to work together. We make participation easier and partnerships more productive to get to results faster and treatments sooner. So every patient's step forward brings them one step closer to a cure, to care, to hope, delivered with heart. Okay, so in that example, uh, Paraxel, uh, a company that works in clinical trials, is talking about patients. And that's one of the things that a lot of clinical research organizations don't talk about. Uh, patients, of course, who may well not live to see the benefits of the miracle drug um, are nonetheless critically important. And what they say about how they work with those patients, I think, is really admirable. It's well done. They have a tagline there. I don't know that you need a tagline in order to share your story, uh, but I thought that was very well done. And of course, they're not being hired by patients <laughs> to do the clinical research. They're being hired by the physicians and the healthcare institutions with the great ideas for life-saving treatments, regimens, or medicines, right? Still, I like the way they're sharing that story. One of the things about healthcare is we look at our providers as in some way or another, 
a hero, right? Healthcare heroes is kind of a title that got tossed around a lot during the heat of the COVID pandemic. Uh, and a lot of focus on nurses and other caregivers with good reason. One of the things that healthcare organizations can do is quite literally be the champion for a particular stakeholder audience in healthcare, frequently patients, right? There are categories of patients, certain demographic categories, where there might be uh, concern with access or, or how they're treated by the healthcare system. And I really like the way that this third example I'm gonna show you uh, went about explaining their reason uh, for being. So uh, let's take a look at, at that. The simple fact is we think that healthcare in many ways is a little broken. I think the latest stats we've seen is about 25% of women are, are satisfied with their OB-GYN experience. My name is Nihel Farouki. I'm the president and co-founder of Viva Eve. My name is Dr. James Gohar. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Viva Eve. You know, I grew up in a medical family. My mother was a physician. My father was a physician as well. You know, ultimately it started with... <laughs> you get the idea. Now, one of the things about this story uh, is they did a great job of explaining uh, their origin story. And remember, that's one of the five examples that I gave of the capital S story, as well as talking about the specific patient community they serve, right? Providing better OBGYN services to women and looking on that as their championship goal. Not champion in terms of I'm at the top of the medal stand, look at me beating my chest, but in terms of being the advocate for a certain group in the healthcare community, right? Okay, Trey, can I, I move forward here with the slides? All right, great. Now, as we come to the close of the presentation, I'm gonna give you three ways to begin uncovering your capital S story in healthcare. And Trey, you can put the uh, word right example in the chat there so that people can see that. So if you want, please just click on the download. You can get that now, but you can also get a copy of it later. This is one way of teasing out what your capitalist story might be. It's the first step in our process, which is called story crafting, where we gather the C-suite leaders of the organization together, and we quite literally ask them those four questions. And then we go around the room and spend some time and dig in. Typically what we find is not everybody's in agreement on what the organization's story is. That's not a problem. That's the raw material to create the unified, strong story puts your leadership on the same page, it's gonna surface ideas. In today's environment, one of the things we're seeing that the people in the room who might be best at sharing the organization's story are the ones who are recruiting and retaining talent. Their challenges right now are probably tougher than the other leaders in the room. And you can learn a lot from how the talent recruitment folks are reaching out to the people they want to join the organization. So that's one example. Another way of looking at this, think about your organization as if it were a person. Great stories have heroes at their heart, right? And so think of your organization as if it were providing some sort of heroic solution. It was a hero. What are the demographics? What sort of person would your organization be? What's the world view? How do you approach your aspect of healthcare? And how do you interact with your clients, your employees, investors, partners, et cetera? Third, and again, these will all be in the uh, PDF of the slides you can look at later. Try some prompts, sit down as a leadership group, have people do this individually, and then share your answers. When you think of your organization, you're reminded of what kind of person or organization? Fill in the blanks. Organization is like what? 
If only we were more or less, the answer to that question can give you some ideas about where you need to look to find your story. Compare yourself to your competitors. We are this kind of organization and they are that kind. Therefore, what story do we need to be sharing in order to set ourselves apart from them? Almost to the end here. Now, why do we care about your story and what do we do? Well, quite literally, and you'll see there'll be links in the, in the PDF, we wrote a book about it. Finding your capitalist story, why your story drives your brand. We developed the trademark process, story crafting, because we believe so strongly in the capitalist story concept. And we've worked with dozens of healthcare organizations over the years to help them share their stories in ways that deliver measurable success. The heart of our team, myself included, we have a lot of former journalists, people who really cut their teeth writing, investigating, exploring, developing compelling narratives. We know what moves hearts and minds and inspires action. And we bring that to our work with our clients. I'm just gonna show this to you now. This is just a graphic that explains our process. Um, when you get the slides, you can take a look at it and dig deeper into it and be happy to chat with you afterwards. Point today's education. So as we get to the end here of the formal presentation, three things that I'd like to ask you to think about. Number one, having seen what you've seen today, what is your organization's capitalist story? And is it driving your brand? Or to put it another way, are you sharing that story as you communicate, as you market to the audiences that are most important to your organization's success? And finally, why or why not? Maybe there's good reasons why you're not doing that. Maybe there are reasons why you should be doing that, and it's time for you to start on that journey to discover the better ways to share your story. As I've mentioned more than once, you're going to be able to download the document that we shared in the, in the chat pane as well. We've got a case study for you to look at, and there's a whole lot more resources on this page on our website that talks all about what we do in healthcare to help share the great stories of healthcare organizations. Now, as you start on this journey and you start to dig into it a little bit, maybe take a look at some of the things we've shared today, I'm happy to connect with you by phone or video, talk it through. <laughs> the book is, you know, 50,000 words, 250 pages. Over 20 years, we've done lots and lots of work in this area. We have a lot of additional resources we can share with you to help you uncover your capitalist story. We can't do it all in the span of an hour, right? And just happy to chat with you. I learn as much from these conversations as I hope the people who have a dialogue with me learn from us about what we've done. And that is the last slide there. There is the link. You're also going to get an email if you've registered for this webinar, either live or uh, watching it pre-recorded, and you'll be able to download the slides, the handouts we talked about, and have access to a lot more resources. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. Appreciate your patience while we got the technical stuff figured out. Hope you found today's webinar of value, and I look forward to connecting with you down the road.